All right, I had an aha moment this morning. I have been doing the mud fossils and found giants, human beings, absolutely no question. There's DNA tested, very specific DNA tests. It could have found 200, uh, I mean 100 base pairs in a couple of different regions in the mitochondrial DNA, 100% human match. Now, that led me to looking at all the different mud fossils that I had and all the different colors that are found in mud fossils and opals and so forth, and I realized that bodily tissues are so extremely variegated, which means that they have extremely different little molecular makeups that cause them to have different colors. And these are the transition metals, and those are literally the molecules of life. If those didn't exist, there is no life. Now, it just hasn't been understood. Now, look at these colors. Now, look at this. That is an opalized heart. You see that? That's a, a regular heart. You see, look at the chambers and the, um, uh, the um, heart strings and the uh, ventricle walls and, you know, the aorta and all that business. Now, here it is right here. Now, what I want you to see, though, is look at the detail of the colors. Now, those colors are there because there's different transition metals that have bonded with the source. Whoops, you can't see that. With the source matter here and they bond with the transition molecules which are metals and they create these spectacular colors now that's great looking however the thing to take away from this is that these require the something here specific to make that particular heart these are heart strings you see those are heart strings look you see them those are the heart strings, and those are specific molecules, and that's the reason they attach to these specific transition models. Now, that has a lot of meaning, and I'll tell you what the meaning is. All right, so this is the uh, this is the biological reason that transition metals are so important. They are the movers and shakers of the body. They move everything. They create different tissues that uh, can only be created with a unbelievable uh, variegation of uh, tissues, and that's because of these transition metals that are in the blood and extremely important. They call them porphyritic or porphyrin. Um, uh, porphyrin rings, and uh, the, the, we're dealing with porphyritic basalts, which are the structural components of creatures. Um, after the uh, organic stuff bubbles off, and then you end up with the metals, and those are in these porphyritic rings. Now, their functions are still unknown. They don't understand these things because they don't. They they think they have no meaning. They call them uh, trans um, um, trace elements. Uh, and they're extremely critical. They, they are the things that allow your tissues to become in these extreme different uh, layers, these different complexes, variegations, they call them. Now, um, and then they go to theories of transition metals. They don't understand it. But my point is, is that this is what we should be studying. How much of this element is here and how much of this element is there? That determines whether that tissue is going to be able to do its job. We saw the pictures. We saw the colors. We know that these things have to have a certain molecular compound complex in these certain specific areas like those heart strings. It's just a fact. This is what we should be looking at, doing some research there. Instead, we're throwing in some of this, some of that, and, and um, you know, hope for the best. And, I think we should just be looking a little deeper myself, but that's just me.